Hey everybody. Um, so uh, a while back, I, uh, I did a video where I was talking about the, uh, the contrast paints and uh, how, um, like I've been kicking around this idea for, I mean, forever, like since they first came out of using like a good Zenithal Prime where uh, you, you know, you have your, your minis and then you, you do black all over and then you do a gray and then you work all your way up to a white. Um, and then, you know, you have your full like value scale. You have your, your value sketch done and you know where all of your light saturated colors need to be and then all of your dark desaturated colors and, you know, full, full gray scale paint job. Um, when you use the contrast paints, you're supposed to paint things like just kind of white, you know, or it'll give them a very light prime. And then you let the contrast paints sort of settle in the cracks and stuff and then do their job where they, they get their like spectrum of colors in there. But um, I did a video a while ago and I was like, what does, we, you know, what do contrast paints look like over like my best Zenithal Prime paint job? And you know, the video got like thousands of views, um, lots and lots of likes, lots of dislikes. <laughs> um, there's a lot of like Citadel fanboy kind of like, you know, uh, GW fanboys like coming out of the woodwork to like defend GW's honor. Because I said, you know, I was like, I, I gave them positives and negatives. I was like, this is what I like about it. This is what I don't like about it. And there's a lot of people that said, you know, you're doing it wrong. I got a lot of you're doing it wrong. Like you're not going light enough with your Zenithal. You know, you need to you need to um, go lighter to kind of compensate for the contrast paints. And uh, I even did a, another follow up video where I was talking about how to um, make your own contrast paints out of uh, like other products because I think that the contrast paints are overpriced. So those are like two of the cons that I gave was that um, it didn't look how I wanted it to. And then um, I think that the contrast paints are, are pricey for what you get, you know, a little teeny tiny bottle. But um, but the, but we have really turned a corner, GW fanboys. Before you come at me, you know, in the comments, like this this really changes things for me because um, you know I'm painting up my uh, house Escher gangers, right? Um, so I I ha I I wanted to have a recipe. Um, this is one of the things that I think the contrast paints are good for is when you. Um, you have like a recipe if you have like an army or something, because nobody expects you to paint like 2000 points of space Marines in one sitting. Uh, and then, you know, like you, you, and if you want, you want them to look like an army, you want them to have a cohesive paint job where they look, um, similar, you know? So, uh, but these are my house Escher gangers, right? The sculpts have tons and tons of detail on them. And uh, it's kind of like a, um, but it's, you know, it's another one of those things where I want them to have a consistent ganger look. Like I want them to all have kind of the same paint job so that they look like they're in the same gang. Um, and then, you know, like in the, in the video where I talked about how to make your own contrast paints, like I was doing a lot of fantasy stuff. So, you know, it's like, it's fine if you're, if you're painting a bunch of orcs or something and they have slightly different skin tones, you know, or like skeletons can look different or whatever. Um, but specifically, like if you're doing like space marines or, you know, Necromunda stuff, you might want everybody to have a really consistent look. So I, uh, I did, did my Zenithal Prime, I did the contrast paints over that. 
And then I set up the wet palette and kind of just went back and fixed things, you know, with the wet palette. Um, and uh, kind of like cleaned things up and, or, you know, like made things like more bright and saturated depending on where I, where I wanted them or, you know, darker or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like I'm pretty proud of them. I, I really like them and uh, the contrast paints are gonna definitely have a, um, a spot like closer in reach to, uh, to my little uh, painting area. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, um, let's, uh, let's get on with it. I'll stop, I'll stop talking and I'll show you the paint job. So first up, everybody got hit with a coat of black all over. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm just doing a, uh, a Zenithal Prime paint job. Um, I did do something a little bit different with this one. Um, I, I, went, I went a lot lighter than I would normally go because I wanted to compensate for the contrast paints. That was one of the things that people said to me, you know, a lot. They're like, oh, you're going too dark. Um, cause normally I would do like a full grayscale. I would go from black up to white. Um, but I'm just, <clears throat> I'm going to hit everything at like 45 degrees. And, um, I, uh, I like to, to thin out my paints. Um, I'm using, uh, Vallejo model air, but I still feel like it's just a tiny bit too thick. Uh, so I, I like to thin it out a little bit before I put it through the airbrush. Then after I do my 45 degrees, then I go over everything with a with an actual white. And uh, this is, you know, usually I would be a lot more sparing with the white. I would not go quite so high key uh, highlights. You know, I would try and get more of like a full grayscale. Um, but the for the contrast paints, I, I went extra extra light. So. I'm gonna mix up some Vallejo Model Air white with a little bit of thinner, and then I'm gonna shoot everything straight uh, top down. Um, but just yeah, going pretty uh, pretty light. Next up, I went ahead and did a uh, light dry brush with uh, Menoth White Highlight uh, P3, and yeah, I just um, I just like this because it has really really good coverage, and um, I actually like the off white kind of eggshell better than uh, pure white, but um, I'm just gonna kind of like pick up like details on uh, clothes and things like that, like folds in the fabric, faces, um, anything like that I want to kind of stand out as a detail. But it, again, like working kind of top down and uh, not gonna get their feet, if, if that makes sense. Just gonna start on the top and then get those highlights in and work my way down and uh, like a, a window shade method, if you know what that is. All right, so first layer of contrast paints. Um, so I'm working from more uh, light to dark this time. Like normally when you do acrylic or oil painting, you're working dark to light. You put your, your darkest colors down first and your lightest colors last. But because I'm gonna be using a lot of the contrast paints, I'm working light to dark. 
So I'm gonna put in like my flesh tones first and I'm gonna put in uh, yellows because um, I, I picked up the, the main colors that for these guys' uniforms, these ladies. Um, I have like a, a flesh tone, I have a yellow, I have like a blue jean kind of color, I have a purple and um, a uh, like a, a black, a, uh, a shader. So yeah, just because that was sort of like the uniform colors that I picked out. But uh, yeah, so it's gonna be easier to paint over the lighter colors later if I make any mistakes or anything like that. It's gonna be easier to go over like flesh tones or yellow than it is to cover up like black or blue or leather um, later on. So if I make any mistakes now, it'll be easier to fix them since there's a lot of detail on these guys. There's a lot of uh, stuff that you can screw up on. Next up, I use Contrast Ayondan Yellow. Um, not necessarily because it's any darker or lighter than the flesh tones, just because I wanted to knock out the lightest colors first. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be using that on all of the uh, armor plates. And you can see in the background, um, I spilled my um, Gilliman flesh because of course I did, you know, it's like it's a brand new bottle of um, Citadel paint. So um, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna be using this to cover all of the uh, armor plates on everything before I go on to like blue jeans and leather and uh, metal and purple uh, tabards and all that so that I, uh, I can fix all of my boo-boos easier. So um, this is one of the minis where the, uh, the contrast paints kind of like shit the bed um, of settling in the right place where they're supposed to because um, these, uh, this armor, these armor plates, you know, these ladies have big boobs, they do, and uh, they have these big like surface areas where the, the paint just wants to like pool. Um, so it's, it's not a big deal. Like I, um, uh, I was gonna go back and fix everything later, but it's like the shadows are on top of the boob armor instead of under it which is not what you want, you know, you want your, uh, you want your shadows in the right place. But um, yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal because I knew that I was gonna fix these later. And then I think I, usually I would try to control some of the pooling, but um, I think I ended up just like forgetting about it on this one and, uh, but coming back to fix it later on the wet palette. But I do like this color. It does, I mean, the, the orange, it's a really nice shadow, and then the yellow is, uh, is a nice highlight color. So I think it's perfect for the ladies of House Escher. Next up, I came in with some Shaiish purple. And uh, these are just, these are all gonna be the darker colors from now on. And it, I don't think it really matters too much whether I'm covering up like the purple or the, uh, the leather or the gunmetal colors. Um, so, but I, but you can easily cover up yellow or flesh tones with this purple if that makes sense. Um, so I mean, I actually, you know, I ended up liking all these colors um, 
they're they're all they're all great. Some I liked better than others, but uh, but this is definitely it's uh, I, I like how dark it is. It can be tough to find a good dark purple. So uh, especially with like considering that the contrast paints are so thin, uh, and then they just they have such kind of lousy coverage. It it really is nice and dark. So uh, so I liked it, but I'm gonna hit all of their uh, their little tabards with this stuff, and then I ended up using some of it on their uh, their hair later, but uh, but that's a different animal because I was wet blending with stuff on the wet palette, but uh, but I'll get to that later. So next up is uh, Snakebite Leather, and um, I had heard really good things about this uh, this paint, um, and I actually felt like the colors just kept getting better and better, like as I went on, um, like the uh, the flesh tone, you know, it's 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 good. Um, there's deeply pigmented washes, other products that I like better, um, but. You know like the or like the yellow same thing the purple like it, it just it kept getting better and better i felt like but this uh this snake bite leather it looked really good just on its own over a xenothal prime and then you know i just went in in like a few places and then kind of added like some scratches and stuff and or you know kind of bumped up the highlights a little bit because the the highlights get washed out with this stuff you 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 want to kind of add a little bit of saturation, a little bit of color to it, but it's just a very light glaze. You know, it's simple. It's a very efficient way to speed paint. Next up, I'm gonna come in and do all of their uh, pants with some of this uh, ultramarine blue. I, I thought about making the pants purple and doing, I was gonna do like a cheetah print, like a purple cheetah print or like a leopard, um, what do you call it? Maybe like some tiger stripes or something. But um, I decided that they were gonna have blue jeans um, instead of purple uh, purple leopard pants. There was a, uh, an ex-girlfriend who, uh, it's a long story. She was a uh, she was a, a raver. Um, she liked her purple leopard pants. I decided against it. But anyways, th this was the plan all along. I wanted to give them blue jeans. Um, so you know, again, this this color is great, especially for like jeans. I think that I went around on everybody, and then it's kind of like in the shadows. Um, the, like it's not like a big part on any of the models like it's just you can only see it all like on their butts or whatever in some places um, But I left it alone like I just just used the contrast paints didn't go back to touch anything up or anything later So just just left it that that color Next up, I I, uh, I had to go back to the store because, um, well, actually I was looking for, um, what is it, Black Templar? Yeah, Black Templar contrast paint, which is like much darker. And then the only thing that I could find was this uh, Basilicanum gray. So the Basilicanum gray has a much lighter highlight it has like more of a, a wide range, like the highlight is pretty light. And then the uh, the dark is, is nice and dark. But um, I love this color. Like it's, this was a huge hit for me. Uh, I just, but I'm just gonna put this all over anything that I want to be metal. And, uh, but I will definitely be using this color a lot more often because just the way that all of the metals came out in the end, like I basically 
just kind of fixed the highlights and stuff, left the shadows, just did like a light dry brush in some places or, or edge highlighting and, uh, and then just left it because it looked great. Um, so yeah, huge fan. Love this uh, Basilicanum Gray color. And then that's the last of the, uh, the contrast paint colors that I bought. So that was the pretty much the whole uniform. Oh, and yeah, I almost forgot. But the other thing that I got was a, uh, a little paint pot holder so that I wouldn't knock any more uh, paints over. <laughs> and you know, like, I, it seems like a dumb thing, but it just makes me so much more like confident that I'm not gonna knock my paint over onto my models. And it makes a huge difference for me. Like it makes it a lot more comfortable for me to use these paints. So I just enjoyed it more and, you know, felt better about it. Like I wasn't so timid and scared that I was gonna bump it. Uh, so yeah, feels good. So one thing that I really appreciated about having the paint pots where the colors mixed up is that there was multiple times where I missed some detail and then I had to come back and like uh, put it back in. And then I have that color mixed up. And if, if it was on the wet palette, you know, that would be a problem. So these, these models do have tons and tons of detail on them. So it's nice if you just, if you miss something that you can just come back in with that color again and, uh, and get it later. And you know, they are in the, the paint pots and I'm painting straight out of the paint pots so I don't have to set up the wet palette, um, which is another thing. And speaking of the wet palette, you saw it coming. Uh, so I am just gonna go in and I'm gonna clean everything up. I'm gonna bump up the saturation on the highlights, you know, make, um, some nice saturated bright yellows on the highlights and things like that. And uh, clean up the flesh tones, add some scratches to the leather, like you name it. Um, the wet palette, you know, it's like, it does take a second to set up, but I'm just always proud of how things look when I'm done. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I'm a, a Vallejo fanboy, like, I don't think that you're gonna see any more of the uh, the Citadel paints from now on besides the contrast paints. Like that's the thing is that with Citadel, I pretty much only use their technical paints. For other colors, there's just, there's always something else that I reach for, whether it's Vallejo or um, AK or P3, like, there's just so many other paints that I like better for for other colors <laughs> when I'm just when I just want to paint when I'm not using like a like a technical blood paint or a crackle paint or the contrast paints. So yeah, I'm just gonna come in and kind of fix all those spots where the the highlights aren't in the right places or they're just a little too washed out. And uh, yeah. Yep, said my piece about that. But I will say that um, if you wanted to do this method and then get some stuff table ready, you know, like if you had a tournament or whatever, like some game that you wanted to play that weekend, I think it's a great way to just get there to where they're like table ready. And then you have something that you can work from like, uh, you know, you come back to it and and do a, a better paint job later. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a good base, because it is, it's, they, look, they look great as a, you know, as a base. It just takes that next step to get them to the next level. But uh, another thing that I tried doing later after I had the wet palette set up was um, wet blending with the contrast paints, like uh, sort of applying them over the, uh, the dry layer to use them like a shader. 
and then um, uh, wet blending in more uh, more highlights with the uh, the yellows that I had on my palette, and uh, I um, I like it. Like especially if I you know if I miss a little spot, like it, and you can 100% wet blend with other paints into the contrast paints. Like the whole thing about you know having to use um, whatever it is their their medium you know our contrast medium to to thin out the contrast paints or blend with them. That's all bullshit. Like you can you can mix other paints into the contrast paints just fine and they look they look fantastic when they're dry so so yeah I, I like using it as a shader as well if there was one other color that I wish that I would have picked up to try on these models it would have been a, uh, a green color so um, I'm just using uh, Vallejo um, Intermediate Green though, and uh, but I did end up using a lot of green on these ladies, just on their like hair and these uh, like feather things that they have on them. So I don't know where the feathers come from in the underhive. Like I think that they just like recycle the dead for food, but apparently these ladies have like parrots or something or like I don't know synthetic feathers uh, yeah but ended up using a lot of a lot of this green and then uh, blending in some of the yellow that I already had on my palette to make a um, just a bright uh, nuclear nuclear green for the feathers and hair and stuff And since I already knew that the um, my other Vallejo colors were going to mix just fine with all the contrast paints, I decided to do some pink and purple hair. Um, so yeah, I just um, put uh, some Vallejo Model Air Squid Pink on, which is another one of my favorite colors. It's my favorite pink. And then uh, I took some of the um, contrast Shaiish purple and then kind of put that in the shadow spots and then blended it together. And I, I love it. I love how it looks. And to uh, fix the uh, coffee staining and kind of like resaturate the the highlights and stuff on the purple I ended up using some uh, Vallejo model color blue violet but again you know I'm just gonna kind of like I'm gonna wet blend it with the contrast paints and then if I want to put some of that squid pink in there for those really high key highlights I can do that but um, yeah I mean uh, Definitely a success, like uh, wet blending everything and getting a nice, uh, smooth, smooth blend with all these different colors. So no problems there. I love this lady though. Like, I think that she's gonna be my leader. Like, I I like her ultimate form. Um, can I speak to your manager haircut? I think I'm gonna call her uh, Karen. She's gonna be the leader. Another color that I want to pick up to try is a red. Um, ended up using a lot of red, but uh, I'm using a Vallejo model color orange fire, and then also a um, Vallejo model air red. And I'm just gonna uh, wet blend those. And the, um, the Vallejo model air, when it comes out of the tube, it's very, very thin and kind of watery compared to game color, especially. Game color is typically a lot thicker, but it doesn't cover up the, um, the Xenophil Prime. So the, um, uh, if I put the, the Vallejo Model Air into the shadows and stuff, 
like on these flames on this uh, this girl with her flamethrower, it's not going to cover up the the dark of the sh of the shadows. Whereas the uh, the orange from the the game color definitely will. It just has it has much much stronger coverage. So I'm just going to put down the red first, and then blend the uh, the orange into the uh, into the red. And uh, I ended up using this later on too to uh, to paint some some hair, but uh, I think I definitely like the uh, purple and green hair a lot better. But um, because the uh, Volleyo Model Air is thinner and it's designed to go through the airbrush, like it has um, um, like what do they call it? Uh, flow improver and things like that in it. That the, the like the contrast paint would have the same thing in it. it. It actually behaves very similarly to a contrast paint, so you can use it in a similar kind of way. Like you can airbrush and then put the uh, the use the full, um, model air like you would use a contrast paint to, to keep your uh, your under your uh, your xenthal layer preserve those highlights and darks in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I had to pick one paint, if I could only use one type of paint to paint stuff with, like minis with, I would probably pick the uh, Vallejo Model Air just because there's so much cool stuff that you can do with it, including airbrushing really well. So, uh, so yeah. But I will stop uh, fanboying around the Vallejo Model Air. This one though, this one just really wants to speak to the manager, like just so bad, just more than anything. She would really like to speak to the manager. So to clean up the coffee staining on uh, metal stuff, I'm just gonna use some P3 cold steel and uh, I just, you know, I just did like a little bit of dry brushing and uh, a little bit of edge highlighting in some places. Like, once again, just like super, super efficient way to speed paint. And I'm really happy with how they look. So yeah, I mean, definitely the biggest hit out of all these colors for me. And, you know, again, like there were some areas where the contrast paints kind of like shit the bed going into sending the pigments to the wrong places. But that's maybe that's not the right term because it wasn't like a, uh, a an irreparable screw up on the models. Um, it's it's an easy fix, just a little bit of an edge highlight or a dry brush and um, they do have some some coffee staining just like all the other colors but just uh, all you have to do is kind of fix those highlights and and then you're good so and that that was just like one little color straight out of the tube and like i'm pretty happy with how that looks so i'm pretty impressed definitely definitely my favorite color out of all the contrast colors so far Uh, the only other thing about using the metallic colors to do your highlights is um, I like to keep them off my wet palette because I feel like it can be like wet palette herpes where it kind of like goes everywhere and it's impossible to control and uh, it mixes with all the other colors on the palette and turns them into metallic colors. So I either do it last or I um, make sure that I just paint it out of the pot and then clean my brush really good afterwards before I do any other painting. So to clean up the uh, the skin tones to uh, fix all of the coffee staining and you know highlights and all that, 
The, uh, the skin tones were the one, the color that I was the most disappointed with. I felt like they had sort of like the splotchiest coverage. Um, but uh, I'm using some Vallejo model color basic flesh tone. And then I'm also using some P3 um, Menoth white base. And uh, the, uh, the model color is, is a lot thinner and runnier and it doesn't have as good a coverage. So it's better for like glazing and stuff like that. But the, uh, the P3 has like super good coverage and it's thicker and then um, it's really nice for wet blending. <laughs> so I'm gonna use both of those colors to get the, uh, the flesh tones where I want them. And then also the there's some spots where the xenithal is just like it's so stark like it just goes from like white to black so i want to just touch up those skin tones and all those places too so the uh p3 um menoth white base is um it, it makes a nice flesh tone it's i think if if you were it's generic color. I think they would call it titanium buff. It's like unbleached titanium kind of color, which is it's it's great for uh, doing painting skin tones. But it it, um, it has a um, it has really good coverage. So if there's any like really bad like splotchy stuff that I just really want to cover up, and then sort of redo the flesh the flesh tones. Um, like mostly I just want to fix the highlights and stuff and uh, wet blend those together but the, the P3 stuff is really good for wet blending and uh, and then the uh, the Vallejo stuff is really good for uh, glazing but uh, but you can totally mix them together and get some beautiful looking uh, flesh tones So to do my leather, um, I the the coffee staining on the uh, the leather, the snake bite leather. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with any of these colors at all. I have nothing but good things to say about all these colors. I just really like all these colors. So I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna use P3 Rucksack Tan and Gun Corpse Brown on top of the leather. So, but like I said, the snake bite leather looks really great just on its own. It makes a fantastic looking leather with the Zenithal Prime. Uh, so I'm just gonna do some, like just take it to the next level. <laughs> so I have a teeny tiny brush and then I'm doing uh, edge highlighting with it to just pick out those worn edges. And then I'm doing like little scratches with it to, uh, to make it look like uh, rough, uh, kind of scratched up leather. And um, yeah, just these, these colors just make like the nicest looking leather. I just love the combination of them together. So I will definitely be using this color again too. The, uh, the Basilicanum Gray and then this, the Snake Bite Leather, huge hits with me. So yeah, as a, as a speed painting process, I'm just, I'm in, I'm in love. Like if you, if you're a Citadel fanboy and you stuck around this long to the end to, to hear me gush over your stupid contrast paints, you're, here's the part where I talk about how much I'm in love with them and how they, they look fantastic. And I like, I got these minis done in a few hours and like I'm just in love with how they look. And I really like that I can use the contrast paints as a shader and then wet blend them and do, you know, just all kinds of stuff combined with other things to get some awesome looking models. But, uh, but yeah, so um, I, I did paint the bases and stuff off camera because uh, I'm doing some experimental kind of rust stuff with that, so. Uh, anyways, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.